Hello everybody and welcome to my 100% walkthrough of Elden Ring by Level Up Pub Gaming. So, in this episode, um, first we're going to level up, next thing to go up is Endurance, and then we'll go to Dexterity and Faith, and then back on up to the top three. Um, in between episodes, I went and cleared out the field once, because we ended the last episode about around 33,000 runes. Uh, cleared out this field, and then I went and farmed at all the spots that... I've been showing you, and I switched the octopus farming spot from this one up to this one. But the first thing we're going to do, um, we're going to finish up the rest of Southern Caleb this episode, and without further ado, hopefully by the end of this episode, we will have defeated Radon, our next shard bearer. <clears throat> Which actually, uh, it's been about three days since I recorded the last episode because I've been so nervous about doing this one, so. I am very shaky and extremely nervous, but um, we're going to start with the four belfries because in the last episode we picked up our last imdued key. So let's go ahead and finish the last portal for the four belfries real quick. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I forgot to uh, upgrade some stuff real quick. I'm going to upgrade my seal to the next tier. And then we'll spend whatever runes we have left. Like I said, in between episodes, you should go clear out the field with the vulgar militia men and farm for materials. Well, I took you, man. And we'll talk about the farming spots a little own. bit later. Oh, I'm going to bring this up to spinning stone fives. Then I'm going to leave it right there. Greetings. Oh, sorry. I mean to be rude, Rodrigo. We're in a hurry. We've got a lot to do in this episode. So make sure when you come to the four belfries that every single time, because this is one of the farming spots, you come over here and you grab these three herbas. Very, very important. Look at that. I just picked up six right there. It's awesome. Get these birds too. See if you can get some feathers out of them. Maybe some cloth hooks too. So always make sure you do that. And really, if you've been stocking up, because I, I promise you this doesn't take very long, and just take a look at some of my numbers. So for herbs, I got 432, 471 butterflies, 358 mushrooms, 553 glintstones. So I'll have plenty when I switch over to the deck, um, intelligence side. Got a lot of holy flower or golden sunflower. I'm starting to get a decent amount for poison pots. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we got a decent amount of mushrooms too. And uh, remember, uh, some of the stuff that I'm telling you to farm now is because we're going to need it later. And I promise you, you will not regret it. It's absolutely necessary to do some of the farming stuff. And we'll talk about it at the end of this episode if we have time. Let's go ahead and go into the last place. It's going to take us to an end of the game area that is absolutely awesome. Pretty eerie and pretty beautiful at the same time. Check this place out. Yes, those are dragons flying around. Pretty awesome. This is actually a legacy dungeon that we're going to come back to towards the end of the game. Jump on down here, and then jump on down to this platform right here, but then wait before jumping down again because we got two beastmen here. So the guy on the left is the boss that we fought in that first cave all the way back in Limgrave, right here. So, he's the Beastman of Far Missoula. So, it's another one of him. So, remember, we did guard counters to fight him. So, that'll help <clears throat> if you uh, don't remember his moveset. 
but otherwise we are going to take out his friend who throws projectiles because we don't want him throwing stuff at us while we're trying to fight the other guy so let's go ahead and light him up And we can, you know, light up the other guy too from here, but let's go ahead and give him a fair fight, shall we? And so now that the shield has no skill on it, that means I can use my weapon art on my scythe while still blocking and stuff, so. Kind of wish he was asleep, but he's going to jump at us as soon as we land, so get ready to roll. out he's gonna do two to do. So you can come down here and farm him for his sword, and I believe his armor set too. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. I think it's a great curved sword, so if you want to come down here, you can keep going to the Fort Belfry side of Grace, and then coming down fighting him. But here's our prize. Got a Pearl Drake Talisman. Which I think... Buffs... Magical damage negation? Non-physical damage negation. So anything that's not physical damage, it boosts negation against it. So basically all, all sorts of types of magic. All right, now we are done with the four Belfries. We can take that off our list. Only thing left to come here for is the Urbas. Now let's go ahead and get back into K-Lady, guys. So first thing we're going to do is start at Fort Faroth, and we're going to coax a dragon down to a statue to break it open for us. And then we're going to run to a grace, or teleport back to a grace. We're going to run from the dragon, we're not going to fight it. Because it, it doesn't drop a dragon heart, it doesn't drop many runes, and it's way, way too tough. So we're just going to tease it over to crack open a statue so we can grab the goodies inside. Just like we do with that, did with that troll in Limgrave. So we already went up on top of that skull and got the goodies up there. Got the one behind there. The dragon's just over here. So I hope you guys are having a good day. Whatever you're doing, whatever day of the week it is. Hope it's treating you all right. I'm not doing too bad. Just been uh, super nervous about this episode because I'm totally terrified of Radon. He is vicious. So here's the dragon we want to catch his attention. Go ahead and give him a shot. So come on down over here. Make sure you stay close enough that he'll know where we are and come after us. I mean, I guess if you want to, like, pelt him with magic on the way down to soften him up, you know, like this. You can throw stuff at him, get, get some bleeds going and stuff. I guess you could do that. But overall, we just want him to very slowly come all the way down here. And I guess we could fight him. Those cuckoos did some damage. Yeah. I guess we could fight him. Might as well. It's always good to get some practice fighting dragons. <coughs> come on, buddy. Here's your good boy. Where's the good boy? Come on. 
There's no way if I was in the land between I wouldn't try and make friends with these dragons. So the statue is right there. Come on, buddy. This way. Almost there. to this ever jail once he's broken it it stays broken so we can go over to this ever jail because we're gonna fight the boss in it and then we'll come back for the goodies so he's not around because he won't follow us down to the ever jail so i told you in the last episode to practice fighting that big wizard dude because that's what's in here so remember his magic is excruciatingly powerful if it hits you it might one shot you i'm not too sure depending on what your vigor is and stuff <clears throat> Excuse me. But, um, we should be able to frost him and bleed him pretty quick. And make pretty quick work of him. So, we'll go ahead and get in and buff up. Remember, you can always buff up after you go into the ever jail. The boss fight doesn't start right away until you walk up to the little hole over there. So, oh, let's go ahead and get some pots going. As always, can't summon for the over jails. You're on your own. Alright guys, it's boogie. Now we can summon him to fight for us. Alright, that dragon should be gone. We can go grab those smithing stones in safety. Opened up three smithing stone fives for us. Thanks, little buddy. That's why I don't like taking him down. Cause he's our, he's our buddy. He helped us. All right, so <clears throat> got that done. Got the battle mage. The jail's done. So one thing I'm going to add to this episode that did not originally have planned until much much later in the game is. Over here, we're going to fight an avatar and do a catacombs. I went to test it last night at about like level 110, because in my notes I put down that there's two rotted avatars, one right here and one right here. And for some odd reason, I put down both of them at 100 level 120 recommendation. But this one was totally wrong. I like two shot it and killed it in two hits. So, and then I went into the catacombs, same thing. I one shot everything in there. So, we are ready to do what's over there. So. Fortunately, we got to tack that onto this episode, but we're going to take out the hardest cave or tunnel first, and then we'll do the easier ones next. So let's go ahead and just get this one over with. All right, you guys, so this is the tunnel. There's some rock grease over here if you haven't got it yet. This is the tunnel that you would be teleported to if you had taken the teleporter trap back in Ankhil Ruins 
in Akiel Lake at the start of the game. So some of you might have gotten it from there, but we got the side of grace by just coming here regular. <clears throat> so I'll show you where you do teleport in when you do take that trap, just in case you do get there and you're stuck. But before we go in, there's some guys up on the roof that we want to take out because they'll start shooting threads at us if we don't. So I don't think we can see one from right here, but this guy over here should walk up as soon as we come in. All right, you buddy, there he is. Let's go ahead and bust out your favorite projectile. And these guys uh, don't like fire too much, so. Good old friends, you should do the trick. take these guys down before they start shooting their threads off. Their threads are really annoying. They can like curve around corners so even if you're hiding behind a corner you think you're safe you can still get hit by their threads. It's pretty pretty aggravating. I don't think we can see the other one from here. Just ignore all these guys that are working. We're gonna try and take out all the creepy crawlies first so climb up here. Oh actually there's one guy. Yeah we got take him out. And then immediately there's a guy behind us. And then there's a few more guys over here we just want to clip out real quick. Oop. So that did more damage because he was asleep and unaware. Enemies that are unaware of your presence will take more damage than enemies that are ready to fight. Now we can start taking out all the diggers and collecting all the goodies in here. Because there are a ton of goodies in here. Would you drop me? Oh yeah. I didn't know you could farm those guys for Aeon Butterflies. Aeon Butterflies are non-respondable and super, super duper rare, so apparently these pests, you can farm them these that's good to know because that's how you make rot arrows which is super super valuable just rot anything rot grease any raw material you need a on your butterflies so you can farm these pests i did not know that as i said i'm really nervous so I keep clearing my throat oh, oh why did you wake up i take your item me too Oh. Where he came from. Oh, I thought that candle was an item. Back here should be an item, though. Yeah. Can't forget that. Let's grab these other ones right here. Excuse me. should be a chest in here. So this is the room you would come in if you had taken that transporter chest. You'd come right here, and if you need to get out because you can't teleport out, you just need to edge along here so you don't aggro that guy right there. He's gonna wake up and start shooting at you, but you just need to beeline it right for the exit, and then go straight down to the grace, and you're good. <clears throat> but before you do that, grab the gravity stuff. I need to take a sip of my water, please excuse me. <clears throat> My apologies. Okay, back to work. Okay, so we got everything up here. Up there is a ladder that will be a shortcut, but first we gotta jump back up onto this roof. And jump over here. If you miss this item, don't sweat it. It's just a um, couple of cuckoo glenstones, which are oh, oh, <laughs> which are the uh, just those little blue. Um, rocks that you throw down that shoot out some magic bolts, so it's nothing important. But try and jump down over there, and then jump up there. And then grab them. So if you miss it, don't worry. And then there's a big guy right here. As soon as we come around the corner, he's gonna charge up, and he's sort of the knight version of these guys. So he's gonna raise his uh, 
staff in the air and he's gonna charge at us and he's gonna do a little bit of a delayed slam so just be ready for it oh. tanky he survived that entire weapon art so yeah be ready to fight I grab the smithing stone five as a reward for beating him anything over here let's check the walls though okay climb on up the ladder we got a few more guys to shoot from a distance Should we grab this somber four Almost good. Alright, so got another creepy crawly guy. Go ahead and just light him up. And then this guy's gonna come out. And there's a few more guys up there. Let me see if I can pelt them from here. That'd be cool. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, that was a good shot. Oh. <laughs> Alright, well, there's a couple guys up there if you want to have some fun. Practice your free range. Go ahead and throw some bombs up there. You might hit them. That's awesome. Let me get their rock blaster. Is basically what that dude did to us when we came around the corner. Now you can cast that spell if you want. It takes a minute to charge up and, you know... You don't want to have high poise because it's easy to get knocked out of the animation. And that's aggravating. So yeah, now we don't got to deal with these guys coming up here because we hit them with some bombs. That's pretty cool. Over there. No. Okay. So here's a ladder that's a shortcut just in case you die to the boss because the boss is really hard. Then you don't got to deal with all that. You can just climb right up here and run past these guys. So we got one more part to this tunnel. We got a guy that if we try to come up to these guys, he's going to come running out behind us. So, And if we try to pick up this item, he's going to come at us too. So, There he is right there, waiting like a punk. So let's see if we can hit him with a bomb. Four in here. We got two up here. We go ahead and repost one, and then we'll chop up the other. Oh, he didn't die. Oh my goodness. Punk. Oh, he's still alive. He got like one HP. Oh goodness. Alright, make sure you double tap that guy, and he's down. <laughs> Uh, the Faithful Canvas Talisman uh, raises the potency of sorceries, so it's kind of the faith, or of, um, I'm sorry, of incantations. So it's the faith version of the Graven Mass School Talisman that we got. I don't know why my computer's beeping at me. Okay, that's everything in here. Now it's all stuff is this nightmare boss. So this is the first time you see one of these, and it is a nightmare. I'm hoping we can frost it and actually I'm going to switch to the Bloodhound's fan for this. So this is a Falling Star Beast. It is covered in extremely hard rock skin so it does not bleed and if it does bleed it takes way too long to try and bleed it. You can't frost it and you can stagger it. It's going to immediately charge at us most likely about 80 percent of the time it's going to immediately charge at us it has two pincers and if you aim a charged attack or a heavy weapon art such as the bloodhound's fangs finesse at its face as it's charging at you you can cause it to stagger now i don't think you can repost it from the stagger but you can get in a couple hits then it'll get up and it clicks its pincers and then it'll start swinging its head at you so it's just kind of like um the uh, regal ancestor spirit that we fought it was that giant deer so his animation attack his attack animations are a lot like that with his thrusts from his head and then of course he can stomp 
and if you just see him rise up with his feet you know get away because he's about to stomp down but then he's going to click his pincers and you'll see some purple stuff like start to accumulate behind uh, underneath you and some rock is going to fly up and so you got to dodge it and it's like one two and then he does like a really long charge and then he bursts up a huge area that you have to run and jump out of and so um aside from that you got the charge and he's gonna he swips his tail around the entire arena and you gotta dodge it just like the sword swings from the uh, magma worm dragon so he's similar to that kind of boss so i'm going to coat my let's see if i got any poison grease actually whoops maybe need to turn that off oh cool all right i'm gonna coat it in poison grease to get him poisoned and then, of course, we're not going to have time to even buff up our summon. We're just going to summon it and then hopefully peel off the weapon art right in its face before before it can hit us. And hopefully that'll cause a stack. If not, then I'm going to get knocked back and take some damage, but that's okay. It's worth it to try and get that stack in. Ooh, and I'm going to rot him, too. Yeah, we're going to poison and rot him, so... Keep forgetting I have the Dragon Breath and Rot. Gosh, we could Frost him too. Shoot, why not? Yeah, this boss is a punk, so I'm trying to do everything I can to take him down. Alright, let's get my... So immediately summon, and then get ready for the charge. Alright, here comes the charge. Oh, I missed it. That's alright. There's really not enough room to do that in here, I guess. Maybe if I try it from here. Alright, let's go ahead and start attacking. Yeah, you just gotta roll that at the last second. Alright, here's the pincer attack. But he's doing its pin. And then, there's the third one. can repost him. I think we can buy uh, somber smithing stones one and two now with this um, bell bearing that we just got. So that was the hardest cave of the episode, but not the hardest boss of the episode. I'm afraid to say. Um, real quick, I am going to go to the roundtable hold and turn that in and upgrade my scythe. So yeah, we should be able to buy somber smithing stones one and two. Although we could have done that, you know, already from EG. But now we can do it at the round table hold. Get the one, two. So let's go ahead and upgrade my Halo Scythe. And then the next somber smithing stone six we get, we're going to upgrade the. Well, I'm going to upgrade my. Ugh, what's it called? Moonveil. Well, I took you no matter lay out your own. And then next will be this. Because this is strong enough, but. Alright, we're saving the Somber Smithing Stone 5s to upgrade our Uchi Katana. 
Okay, so next we have another poison cave. I know these guys, these are so much fun. I know that they're your favorite, so make sure you have uh, <clears throat> boluses for rot or the flame cleanse me incantation. in here because we're fighting and rotted out enemies so when cleanse me and make sure you have bloodhound step equipped on a dagger which i do not oh no yeah i do Aha. so yeah make sure you have bloodhound step because that's what you're gonna use to get through let's put on this hand actually yeah sure i'll use this again As soon as we jump down, uh, we're going to start taking rot. You do not want to be standing near those explosions. Those explosions do so much damage, it's really disturbing. So go ahead and get out your weapon with uh, Bloodhound Step. As soon as we jump down and it goes off, go ahead and just peel right through over to here. And we're going to do the same thing into there to get the item. Wait for it to go off. Because actually, this stuff is super thick and you can't even run through it. Alright, now we go. Let's go ahead and get the rod off that we do not. Okay. Alright, there we go. Should we have a few in here. Just do target lock until you can, oh wait no, that's after this part, so, oh wait, yeah, so the enemies are down here, you can crawl down that way, but it's better to just jump straight down, but there's a couple of guys that shoot some poison at us, we don't want them bothering us while we're trying to traverse this, so go ahead and just throw a bomb at them, they're super weak to fire, should be the old So now we're going to jump down and get this bow right here, which is the best bow. One of the best bows in the entire game. So if the explosion go off and then leap over. Grab the bow. Hop on out. So the cool thing about the serpent bow is that it does poison damage no matter what arrow you are using. So um, it's slow. You know, it takes a lot of arrows. But like if you use just 15 regular arrows through it then you will poison your enemy that you're shooting it with, so really, really useful. Uh, skills with Dexterity and Arcane, I believe, so it's awesome for you Arcane users. Alright, in here we're going to have a big flower, well first some rats, but we'll have a big flower coming up surrounded by a bunch of guys that shoot poison. We're going to try and snipe the guys that shoot poison first, because if we're trying to dodge everything that the big flower does while these guys are shooting poison at us, it's really annoying. So they should be right up there on that ledge. Let's go ahead and give them a burst. That's one down. There should be another one right around the corner up on this ledge. So let this thing see you. Let it build up its lightning so that it's just in that area. And then we'll go up. Oop. Oh, there's another guy. So those are the poison things we don't want to hit him. Hit him with fire to get his rot to go away. And we'll hit the little guys with some flames too to get him to leave us alone. I thought there were some guys up there that will come bother us, but I guess not, so... I guess we're good. They got the dude too that were up there, so now we can just start... About to let burst his rod. But set him on fire and it'll go away. What? Didn't even see him charging up. Thought he was still freaking out from being on fire. Knock it off. So, this cave actually, you know, you see how many Aeonia butterflies. 
there are a lot of um, speed runners and stuff will come here to collect these butterflies just so they can make broad arrows to take out a few bosses easier because this is the only place in the entire game where you're going to get these mini neoni butterflies there's a few more spots with a lot of them in there but not as much as this or as easily accessible as this let's go ahead and climb on up this junk grab these summons or no sorry venomous fang that's right that is a fist weapon that causes poison buildup This and then we'll go on to the boss fight. It's a silly cave, but a short one. Alright, so we got two clean rot knights in here. You know how fun these guys are. So one is a scythe, and then the other one is the spear. So just like the ones that we were fighting in the poison swamp. I'm sorry, not the poison swamp, but the. Uh, A swamp of rot over in Caleb. So let's go ahead and get some fire damage going. And then we'll summon up our knight. And should be pretty quick work, you know. It's just, um, I think they have like the same HP and the same attack and defense as the knights that are in the swamp, so shouldn't be too hard. scare up to talisman that increases your rune acquisition so when you're out uh, farming the vulgar militiamen you pop that on it'll give you give you a boost it'll take it from like 1100 runes to like 13 1400 runes very useful all right so normally that would have been it we would have gone on to start the quest but unfortunately i did make the mistake of not realizing that this is in the same area as southern Kalid, and thus the same difficulty the difficulty increases from here upwards to where you want to be about around level 120 but right here we can take everything that's in here so let's go over to the smoldering church real quick okie dokie so we have a rotted out herd tree avatar but still weak to fire and they'll go down really quick to it too so Shouldn't be too much trouble, but the difference is it's slam, where it jumps up in the air and slams down, tries to sit on you. It now has a rot explosion at the end of it, so you cannot be in front of it when it slams down. Even if you roll backwards, the AoE from the rot will still hit you, and it rots you very, very fast. So, very, very powerful attack. You gotta be careful. God, I hate these guys. Stay still. So, I want to fight these guys on Torrent up here because they're all going to group up, like, six or seven of them. They're going to start attacking you at once. So, I think this guy jumped down. So, just right up on Torrent because, yeah, they're punks. I like to try and jump around and be sneaky. Oh, see? I don't even know where you came from. I yeah, like to poison you, too, but... That's all. Okay. So there's the avatar right there. I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to my good old sink. Alright, go ahead and summon. We got plenty of time to buff up our summon too, so. There you go, Oleg. Or 
said, hey, we're not done. Get back here. I need one of these. Mama's got a few more. Now I need to waste a pickle neck on this guy. did a lot of damage. Oh my goodness. There's the rock. So see how see how much of a radius it encircles him? You want to roll around him. Alright, here comes. What's up, buddy? So should be pretty easy. Just, just don't, don't want to get caught in that rock. That rock, see how much it's kind of doing like a, a combined effect on the damage and successive attacks. So it just like ticks away at you and it'll stagger you out of most of your attack animations too. So very, very vicious. Don't want to get caught in that. Come over here, very dangerously walk out onto this ledge to get a cracked pot. And don't draw any attention to yourself, because that giant over there, if he for some reason sees you, he will shoot you from over there. It's very annoying. Now, we should go level up real quick. But we're close enough, we can just crack some runes. Was that a arterial leaf? Aw, thought I saw some red over here. We always love our arterial leaves. All right, it's pretty simple and uh, short catacombs. Just some goblins and I think some crabs and stuff in here. And then the boss fight is just two of something you've already seen before. Oh, God, that's my Jeez. So we got the fire um, crack tier now, so we can up our fire damage. And the other one is awesome. It temporarily boosts your stamina recovery speed, but it does it for, I think, like three minutes. So it's basically just an advanced version of the pickle turtleneck. So I like to, uh, when I have hefty bosses that I'm going to run a lot with that you'll see later on, I like to put those two together. Helps a lot. Don't need flame coins anymore, so let's switch to something. As always, you want to have some shields out with 100% block when you go through these dungeons. A lot of imps love to run around corners, jump on you. Like that. Okay. So this one's a little tricky because it gives you takes you right to the boss lever, but then it hides where the actual boss room is. So we don't go this way first. We go this way. Takes you right to the boss lever, but then it doesn't tell you where the boss room is. That's the trick of this dungeon, is you gotta find the boss room. What? How my shield up? You little punk. 
I actually get my favorite mask in the entire game in this dungeon, I believe. Oh, whoa, that was my bad. Me just getting excited about the fact that I think this is the dungeon that has my favorite mask in it. Let's go ahead and open the boss door. Although I could be wrong. My notes. Oh, look at my notes. Yep, okay, let me get that. So we got one more section before we actually go down to how we get to the boss room. So we're gonna get up there. But we gotta go through a little bit of rock. Just ignore these guys. Get the goblin up there feeling. Come on, boss, Jim. It might fall down. Come after you. Like that. That's all we can do in here. And we'll fight those guys in a minute. And so the way we get up there was kind of tricky. Down through here. Get ready to get ready to fight as soon as you jump down. There he is. Come on, buddy. <laughs> Took a minute to lift that up. It's a heavy sword for you, isn't it? Myself every time it looks like a secret passage. Just waiting for my rod to go down. That's good enough. Over this way is how we get out of the upstairs. So you're ready to fight a bunch of bunch of imps. Or I think there's three of the crabs, yeah. Okay. And up here should be where we get our mask. Up, buddy. Time to get to work. You too. You guys are slacking. Raises your endurance by two levels, which is awesome. I just love the way it looks. When I've been wearing it, and I fight uh, fight Melania, impossible. Oh man, take him down. The boss that we'll encounter much, much later in the game. I use it to fight her. Where'd the other one go? Oh, you fall down too? I guess so. Alright, sacramental buds, and we'll go back this way to the boss room. So I always wear this during fights just because it raises my endurance. Endurance is super important. Whoa, no, that made me a heavy load. Bummer. Oh, well, duh, I have a bunch of stuff on. So, these guys are pretty annoying. We got a magic one, then we got, I think, one with a sword. Or they both might be magic. I can't remember. But it's two Erd Tree Burial Watchdogs, so we're just going to pull out the knight, pull out the Bullet Town's Fang, and start slashing them. Should just be a couple of hits with the Bullet Town's Fang, so... Um, you have time to buff up Old Egg if you want, but I don't want to bother.
Hmm. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, one's a sword, one's magic. We want to get rid of the magic one first. Because it's going to shoot magic, obviously, so. Come on, slam. Did I just heavy roll? Why am I heavy rolling? It's because I put on the Bloodhound's Fang. Yeah, it's heavier than the Scythe. That's why. I should have taken this off. Oh well. Well, that was an interesting fight with the Fat Roll. I don't think I've ever fought the boss with a Fat Roll before. That was interesting. Oh. Always check for this. The resonance very important. Alright, you guys. We are done with Southern Kaelid. And now we are on to start a couple of quests. We're going to start Ronnie's quest. Celibus's quest basically Blythe's quest and um, that's gonna take us into the Redon festival so let's go on over to Ronnie's rise let's get to it okay so like I said for cinematic purposes I take that off when I not in battle but then when I'm in battle I put it back on So Ronnie's not going to be happy to see us, and she's going to send us away. That's okay. Again we cross paths. I believe I said my name was Rena when last we met. It pleaseth me to see Torrent hale and hearty, but tarnished. What business hast thou here? I have no memory of inking thee an invitation. Go ahead and say that. I see. Quite the sleuth, aren't we? Indeed. I am the witch, Rani. I stole a fragment of the Rune of Death and used it to forge the godslaying black knives through fearsome right. I did it all. But sadly for thee, the curse mark thou seekest is not to be found here. I have slain the body I was born into and cast it away. And it is upon that flesh the curse mark is carved. And why should I reveal that to thee? I performed the act not to bury the past, nor in shame of the deed, but all the same. Thy begging compels me not a jot. The curse mark thou seekest is not here. That is all I will say. Now, be gone. And so now we got to report back to Roger in the round table hold about what Ronnie has just told us. And then from this point, Roger's quest is about to come to an end, unfortunately. Always good to see you, son. I see. When Ronnie shed her flesh, she shed the curse mark, too. You know, not everyone would trust such a tale. But if she in her current form is nothing more than the living doll you profess, then perhaps it's true after all. Hmm. Forgive the bluntness of the notion, but 
How would you like to become one of Rani's vassals? Ah, oh, only in order to get what we want, of course. The location of the body which bore the curse mark, which right now I haven't the faintest. And the best way to find out is for you to enter her service and take a poke around on the sly. I know you've got what it takes. Not only are you a superb fighter, but people want to trust you. I've seen it. Can you become Rani's vassal to advance our agenda? While in her service, you'll be able to take a poke around on the sly and determine the location of her original body that bears the curse mark. I realize that I'm asking you to put yourself in grave danger, but I know you've got what it takes. Quite possibly the only one, in fact. Wasn't that nice? Can you become Rani while in her and determine? I realize that I know. Sometimes, if it doesn't disappear, that means there's more dialogue, but in this case, not. I'm gonna bow to him for his compliment. Plus, he's not gonna be around too much longer. And then death play is nasty stuff. Oh. Alright, I got the only incantations from him. Okay, let's get out of here. Boop. Now I'll go back to Ronnie. Don't fall down. I guess that make a pretty good shield. Got your arm there for support. The curse mark, those now. I wish to serve you. Say yes. Oh, is that so? Thou wouldst render me aid. Is that thy proposal? Affording thyself opportunity to grope about for the curse mark's location, no doubt. She's smart. Mm. Very well. There's nothing wrong with a well-laid scheme. What's more, if my past and past wounds beckon to thee, I am curious enough to see what thy destiny portends. I'll allow it. Enter my service, and good hunting to thee. Good. Then I ask we proceed with haste. There is, in my service, a half-woven warrior by the name of Blythe. I would have thee join him in searching for the hidden treasure of Nokron, the Eternal City. I have called for Blythe to greet thee below. Take from him the particulars. Ah, and there wilt thou find E.G., my war counselor, and Salavis, preceptor in the sorcerous arts also. Heed not their peculiarities. Feel secure in gaining from them what advantage thou canst. I am sure the others will be doing just the same. Speak with the three who await thee below. Thou needst not indulge them unduly. But they too wish to appraise thy worth. It hath been a passing long time since a newcomer entered my service, after all. As always, we give our Lady Rani a bow. Alright, you can't teleport out, you can't attack anymore until we come down and talk to these three. I should pull this to talk to. So we'll talk to them all here and then we'll go talk to them out in the world. Starting with Eti. Oh, so you were the one. Lady Rani has explained everything. Again, I am Eiji. The Karian royal family's dedicated blacksmith and Lady Rani's war counselor. I am told that you are searching for Nokron with Blythe. I will give you whatever guidance I can and pray for your success. My apologies for the misleading words of warning. I never imagined that an audience, let alone service to Lady Rani, was in your fate. I, for one, should have seen it, but I did not. Do forgive me. 
My fellow, let us give all that we can of ourselves, together, for Lady Rani. Oh, let us give all what a together. And same with Blythe. Hmm. Long time, friend. Blythe. If you've forgotten, glad to have you in the service of Mistress Rani. Well, getting right to business. I'm still in Limgrave. The eternal city of Nokron lies somewhere at the bottom of this land. I'm planning to go below through the well in the Mistwood. See if I can't find the road to Nokron from there. I'm going below through the well in the Mistwood. See if I can't. Don't keep me waiting. All right. The last person is not so cool. I see. You must be Rani's new hireling. Yes, yes, I've heard all about you. I am Selavis, preceptor in the sorcerous arts. I don't know what it is the mistress sees in a provincial tarnished like you, but since we have the misfortune of serving the same lady, I ask that you kindly try not to drag us all down with you. Isn't he nice? I reside in another tower close by. Come and pay me a visit. Should you wish to be of actual service to Mistress Rani, if it were up to me, I wouldn't waste my time on the likes of you. But who am I to stand against the wishes of my lady? I reside. Come and pay me. Should you? Okay, now let's go talk to Ron. Well, actually, we'll sit down at the grace and then we'll talk to Ronnie. That should despawn everybody. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Ronnie should be asleep. Asleep for quite some time. Yes. So Ronnie's asleep now. Do not hit her. You can hit, so be careful not to accidentally press that because I think if you hit Ronnie, she'll disappear just after one hit. So you want to. Um, If you do hit her, you want to go get Absolution. Go to the Church of Vows and use a Celestial Dew to ask for forgiveness, and that should bring Ronnie back. Just in case that happens. So let's go meet Syllabus. Make sure you're grabbing goodies on the way there. If you're traveling down to somewhere, always grab the foliage on the way down. Always, guys. The reason my inventory is so stocked right now is because I go out of my way to pick up foliage like this. Even if you're not going to use it anytime, at the very least, you can sell it or um, use it. You know, just in case, like, hey, I want to save some smoldering butterflies, but I need projectiles right now. Alright, I'll go ahead and make some magic pots, even though my intelligence isn't too high. At least it's something I can throw. So, it all adds up. But let's go ahead and head on into this rise. Well, well, you took me at my word. Did you not realize I was merely being polite? Oh, you provincials never cease to amaze. Uh, I suppose you're here now. Perhaps I'll give you something to do. I'd like you to find a woman called Nefeli to administer a potion. Even you can do that much, can't you? Accept the task. Good, good. Now I shall hand over the potion in question. Find Nefeli and ensure she drinks it. I expect glad tidings, and soon. I've no time for idle chit-chat. The only thing I will hear from you is a report of your task's completion. Are we understood? Then off you trot. I have enough on my plate. <laughs> Yeah, he's a punk. Alright, let's go up and get his memory stone, though. At least steal that from him. For being so rude. 
and then we will not give that potion to Nefeli. There's actually three options. You can give it to Nefeli, which will turn her into a puppet and end her quest. But you can summon her, but it's not worth it. Don't do it. You get better rewards for completing her quest. Or we can give it to Dung Eater, which will end his quest and turn him into a summon. Which he is an actually awesome summon. One of the best best summons in the entire game. But also not worth it because as this is 100% walkthrough, I'm trying to have every ending available. Although both these endings are not, or I'm sorry, Dung Eater's ending is not part of the 100% trophy achievement though. But I do want to have all endings available for anybody just in case they have one that they're, you know, wanting to see. So I'm going to go ahead and put this over the actual grace, just to keep things organized. But now we're going to give it to the third option, which is Gideon. And he's going to get rid of it. So that way Nefeli and Dung Eater's quests will remain open for us to complete. Journey to the capital. The two things you may be. So, oh, before we do that, I want to read it. I keep forgetting about this, and I've done it with a few of the remembrances and the items, because I'm separating the reading descriptions and testing Ashes of War and spells into separate episodes to save time. So, um, but there are some items that we get, and then, you know, we're going to use them, or they're going to go away, so I need to read them before we actually do that. So let me go ahead and just read his real quick. Small flask received from Perceptor Celevis containing a cloudy tonic of bluish black. Find Nefeli and ensure she drinks it. Journey to the two things you may be. Is that portion what I think it is? Bloody Celevis. I suppose he's up to something again. Oh, I won't interfere. You go ahead and do what you must. The round table has no code to speak of. But I ask you this. Are you really going to do the bidding of that twisted dolly botherer? Or would you rather hand that potion to me and see if we can't get one over on the bastard? And that is what we're going to do. Good. I'll dispose of the potion myself. You go and see Selenus, but don't give anything away. Just tell him that you tricked your mark into drinking the potion, as planned. Despite knowing next to bloody nothing, he's so far up his own ass he won't suspect a thing. Mm -hmm. His inevitable display of arrogance will certainly be a sight to behold. All right. So now let's go report back to Solus. Oh, before we do that, let's go talk to Nefeli Lou. Because talking to her at this point that we've given the potion away will ensure that she moves on to her last part of her quest. In this ash, it reminds me. Okay, that's it. All she needs to do is say that. Make sure you give her the Stormhawk. She hasn't... We don't have the potion anymore, so now she is on to move on. She is... What do you call it? Triggered to move on to her final location. Which I will show you when. So let's go talk to Celevis. Fortunately, Celevis didn't have a grace down his rise, so we gotta ride down there every single time from Ronnie's rise. That's okay. I'm gonna grab goodies on the way down. Especially these crystal buds. Man, these are good. We're gonna be using a lot of um, shield grease towards the end of the game. A lot of annoying enemies late game that you can bounce their attacks off of shields covered in grease. Great shields too. It's really awesome. That'll help a bunch. We'll be doing a lot of guard counters. And lots of parrying. Basically it's gonna be, that's what we're gonna do when we get back to Far Missoula, that tornado place that we reached at earlier. Ah, so you made Nefeli drink the potion. Well done. You are a touch more useful than I had thought. Very well. Then you shall have your gift. Knowledge of the sorceress arts and of the tutelage of the great preceptor Celevis. I doubt much of it will lay within the grasp of a mere tarnished, but if you put your mind to it, perhaps you won't embarrass our lady. You wish to begin right this moment? 
Well, your impatience, though boorish, is understandable. Let's have at it. So, go ahead and exhaust his dialogue. So, you had Nefeli drink the potion? Truly? Hmm. Then perhaps something was amiss with it. It's concocted from the finest ingredients, but perhaps I should review the recipe. I may have expected too much of her to begin with. And now we can buy a puppet from him. Or no, I'm sorry, Miss Sorceries. Um, we do have to buy these to progress his quest. So I'm just going to go ahead and start buying them now, even though I'm not going to be using them anytime soon. So we'll come back for the other two and we need to progress his quest. And when I say his quest, I mean his, because he's a part of something else that we need to do, but it's not his quest. So his quest involves buying the rest of those and then going into the next landmass area. But until then, we will use him, but we're going to go over to the Sayufra Riverbank side of Grace. And we're going to go find Blight. Don't worry, we're getting to Redon. We'll be there in about maybe 10 minutes. Which I'm not looking forward to. My heart is racing, my mouth is dry. He is brutal, 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 brutal. So there's Blyde right up there. But make sure you fight these guys that appear right here first because they will chase you all the way up to Blyde and then attack you while you're sitting next to him. So make sure you take these guys down first. Yeah, they will chase you all the way up here, though, so make sure you take them down before you come talk to Blythe. What's up, boy? Ah. Good to see you. Apologies, mate. But I don't have much to report. I can see bloody Nokron right above me. But I'm absolutely stumped. I've tried all the gateways, to no avail. Perhaps it's time to ask Celebus. I recall that spiteful little rat acting like he knew something. Let's give him a squeeze. Show him just how sharp my teeth are. That's not Kron, what he's talking about. I jest. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. Besides, uh, I should check on some things here. Leave this place to me. You just do what you feel is right. If either of us learns anything, we tell the other. Right? Of course. You're my homie. Alright, guys. Let's go talk to Selvis again. I know there's a lot of back and forth in these quest lines. Yeah, we'll talk about the Radon fight before we go into it and everything, but um, I'm not probably going to be able to show you some of his moves. we will be really lucky if we get to see some of his moveset, especially in Phase 2. Phase 1, you'll be able to see everything, but Phase 2 is what I'm really worried about. I hope he does his special moves and we get to see him. Hopefully I can dodge him, but most likely. I'm going to give it like one or two shots by myself, and then I'll show you how... Everybody else beats him, and how we're how you're gonna beat him too. Begging for another lesson so soon. Ugh, me. So go ahead and click on about not grown. Well, well, you're asking me about that, are you? The task was left to you and the mongrel, was it not? Not only are you incompetent, but shameless to boot. Well, there's no helping it. Now's as good a time as any. I'll let you in on it. There's a glintstone sorcerer by the name of Selen in Limgrave. She owes me for the help I gave her when she was expelled from the academy. I asked her to look into the matter some time ago. I'll write you a letter of introduction. Go ask her. Okie dokie. 
So let's take a look at that letter really fast before it's out of our inventory. Scroll, scroll bearing a royal coat of arms, a letter of introduction written by Preceptor Celevis, addressed to a glintstone sorceress by the name of Selin. The contents of the scroll cannot be discerned. Interesting. All right, we know Selin. Let's go talk to her. What's up, girl? Long time no see. There you are, my apprentice. Shall we commence the lesson? Well, well. Celevis is not a name I ever wanted to hear again. But fine. If it will help you, my apprentice. I offer my knowledge. The stars alter the fate of the Karian royal family. And the fate of your mistress, Rani. But long ago, General Radan challenged the swirling constellations. And in a crushing victory, arrested their cycles. Now he is the force that repulses the stars. If General Radan were to die, the stars would resume their movement. And so too would Rani's destiny. It's pretty interesting. And so with that, I believe we have restart we have started the Radon Festival. I'm gonna go ahead and buy stuff from her. If you don't buy things from most of the merchants in the game, don't worry about it. You're going to, even if their quest ends or you don't complete their quest correctly, most of them will leave their bell bearings at the end of their quest for you to be able to take to the Twin Maiden Husk in the Round Table Hold, give them the bell bearings, and then all of their items become available. But I know I have some books that I need to give to the Turtle Pope. So now that we talked to Selvis, we're going to go and talk to Blythe. I believe I have a few books to turn in. Greetings. I mean, you can you can turn these in to different people, like Corin or Selin. Um, I just like to... Oh. oh, looks like I don't have any to turn in, so my apologies. I think I must have done it off screen. I just want to make sure I have all the incantations available. We'll come back for the sorceries when I switch over to intelligence. But this um, becomes available after you get your first celestial dew, so let's go ahead and listen to this real quick. Do you possess any celestial dew? Then I would like to share my knowledge with you concerning the miracle of this Church of Vows. Radigan once cleansed himself with celestial dew, repented his territorial aggressions, and swore his love to Renala. The order of the Erdtree and the fate of the moon were conjoined, and all the wounds of war forgiven. This miracle blesses the church to this day, and so you need only follow Radigan's example to restore any bond, however strained or severed, to its rightful state of harmony. My faith does not waver. The miracle rooted in these grounds will once again mend the world. And this time, its bounty will not be squandered. If you would be Elden Lord, tarnished, I hope that you too will share my faith. Interesting. I guess he's got a new one about the miracle. To experience the miracle, Kneel in the basin at the back and cleanse yourself with celestial dew. Absolution will be yours. Any bond, no matter how strained or even severed, will be put to rights. Now remember, that's not for everything. Sometimes there are a couple of quests that if you sever it at certain points, even if you come and do celestial... Um, absolution it won't work so just be wary it's always worth a try when you mess up a quest but sometimes it doesn't change anything so let's go and talk to Blythe and after we talk to Blythe it is on you guys the most intense one of the most intense boss fights in the entire game coming up I'm not even gonna not even gonna joke with you guys it is brutal be prepared to die and make sure that your strategy does not involve 
having this rune arc activated. I'm gonna try and take him out in one one go, but um, if I go down more than twice to him, I'm not gonna crack another rune arc. So I'm gonna die once trying to showcase just him straight up without any other summons. I'm gonna see how far I can get into that, but then after that we're gonna do it the way that the game is intended, or the game the game intended for us to do it. Ah. Well met. What news? So tell him some of the story. Hmm. So Rani's faith is kept in stasis by Starsgur's Radan. That reminds me of something I heard. There's a festival being held at the castle on the southern edge of the Caled Wilds, east of Limgrave. It's a festival of combat. And I heard that you can fight Radan himself. He who's once called the strongest of all the demigods. Maybe it's just a coincidence, but I think it's worth investigating. I'll be on my way to this festival of Radan then. You're coming too, right? To Radan's festivities. I'll meet you at Redmain Castle in Caled. The way ahead is pleasingly simple. We fight, sword, and fang. Alright, and that is it. The Redon Festival has been activated. So if we go down to the Impassable Great Bridge, which is that bridge that we had to cross getting shot at, you'll see that now there's a portal. And if you go across the bridge, no one will shoot at you. And the reason why is because the entire castle has been emptied. And so, if you have started the Radon Festival and you haven't done Red Main Castle, do not worry. After you defeat Radon, you'll go talk to Jaren, one of the NPCs, and you'll notice the entire castle is empty now. There's no enemies. Um, after you talk to Jaren, after you defeat Radon, you sit down to Grace and it will spawn everything in the castle and you can clear it out if you haven't done it yet. So, do not worry about that. Totally okay. Oh, I forgot to grab this grace. Did I really? Oh, I must have. Oh my goodness. I forgot to touch this grace when I beat the boss in here. Oh jeez, let's talk to everybody first. Ah, there you are. Took your sweet time. The players are all made up. I'm waiting for the curtain. Let's give them a show to remember, eh? Just don't you go dying on me. For Rani's sake, too. Once more into the fray together, eh? <laughs> this might even be fun. <laughs> Come over here to get a new gesture. The polite bow. And then Alexander should be here, but as soon as we walk up. Champions! Here. Welcome! The stars have aligned! The festival is nigh! General Radan, mightiest demigod of the Shattering, awaits you. Champions, prepare for battle. Defeat the general, claim glory, and grab that great rune. A celebration of war. The Radan Festival! So, the spirit... That spirit, that spirit, they aren't other players. These are NPCs that we can summon on the battlefield. So you can summon him, you can summon him. Hey, isn't there... You can also summon Patches. I don't think he's here, though. Yeah, I don't see him anywhere. But um, if you see Patches' sign, so Patches, that merchant that we fought... If you see his sign on the battlefield, ignore it, because if you summon him, one, it'll take up a space, because you can only summon, I think, like, three or four, or four or five NPCs at a time. So if you summon Patches, it'll take up a space, and then after 15 seconds, he'll return to his world, because he's a coward. So don't summon him. Let's go ahead and talk to Alexander real quick. Ah, you came. How delightful. Indeed, I thought I might find you here. By the by. Do you know for whom this festival is being held? Well, it is none other than General Radan himself. To think, 
I could face a great champion of the shattering, a demigod in the flesh. Oh, God. In truth, I quiver at the thought. Such is his frightful repute. But the fear simply assures me the ordeal is worth undertaking. Be sure to get a good vantage, my friend. I, Iron Fist Alexander, do hereby vow to unflinchingly brave this ordeal. All right. Let's go talk to Jerry. Are you good and prepared, young chum? The festival begins. Before we begin, allow me to paint you the full picture. General Radan is cursed ever to wander. Eaten from the inside by Melania's scarlet rot, his wits are long gone. Now he gathers the corpses of former friends and foes alike, gorging on them like a dog. Sky. But now, we must make merry. Oh, gathering of champions, the revels begin. The celebration of war. The Radan Festival. Let me get heartening cry. So that guy down there with the big hammer, when you summon him, it will give you a new gesture. So you need to make sure that you. If you summon him, it'll bring that gesture up and you need to exit out of that box and press OK. Otherwise, you'll try and attack and you won't be able to do anything because it's telling you you got a gesture and you got to close the notification box for it. Come over here for Smithy Stone 6. And then come over here for the most intense and terrifying battle of this entire game, in my opinion. Ugh, my hands are shaking. Okay, guys, let's talk about Radon. <clears throat> so... We're going to teleport into the fight, as you can see from that teleporter right there. You can summon your friends right there with that summoning pool. And you can also put your sign down to help others. So, it's going to take us right over there. And basically we're going to be standing next to that little pile of rubble right above my head. Don's going to be standing at the tip of that hill, and he's going to start shooting gravity arrows at you. They come really fast, but they're pretty easy to dodge. As soon as you run up to this mess right here, you're going to see three golden signs. And then if you run over to the next pile of mess, there'll be some more golden signs. And when you're behind the pile, it'll block one arrow from Radon. So one arrow and then the pile will fall down and then the next arrow you have to dodge. So you can run for cover behind this, but it only covers one arrow's worth. <clears throat> when you get a certain distance to Radon, he's going to change from shooting gravity arrows, one single arrow at a time, to shooting a bunch of spears that'll fly up in the air and then come down and rain towards you, it'll follow you. And while that's happening, he'll shoot big, like, explosions of the spears, so like five or six at once at you straight. And then as you get really close to him, he'll shoot a couple more gravity arrows, and then once you get really close to him, he's gonna pull out his two swords. <clears throat> now he's on a horse. You can also get on torrent in this battle, so make sure you have torrent ready. Um, he's on a horse, so he can catch up to you super fast. You can barely run away from him, even at a light load. And his slams with his swords cover an absurd distance. It is very, very, very hard to dodge his attacks. To the point where it's better to just get under him, like any other giant. Or actually get behind him. A lot of people that can fight him very well, they'll constantly just be rotating around him as he's doing his attacks so they can get behind him and attack him while he's just over here slamming him. Now his patterns 
you're probably not going to experience because if you summon he's going to be distracted and usually attacking the other summons and so if a summon dies i believe their sign will appear three more times on the field somewhere and you got to go find it and summon them again so you can just keep summoning them until you feel like you have enough comfortable a comfortable amount in to help you with the fight um so since most people would be fighting him that way it means that you're not going to be seeing his attacks up on an intimate level so i'm going to show you the first time i go in i'm going to show you how to get to him because i know how to get to him without all the arrows hurting you and i'm going to show you just what his attacks are like i'm going to try and get him into a second phase so i can show you specific attacks so when he gets down to phase one right he has four phases the first phase is 70 percent He's going to slam his swords together, slam them in the ground, and crag blade them. Remember that crag blade ash war we have where we slam it and it covers it in rocks? So he's going to do that to both his swords. And then he's going to have some gravity attacks. He's going to have a wave he can send at you, which you just got to roll forward into. And he's going to create some balls. And these balls will come at you and grab you and pull you straight towards him. And then he's going to start slamming. If you get caught by that, the best thing you can do is don't roll away because he's going to catch you roll into him and under his legs if that happens and usually he'll miss you so aside from that when you get him down to 50 percent health he's going to jump up in the air and completely disappear then depending on where you're standing on the field he's going to come plummeting out of the sky like a missile and smash into the ground and drag for quite a while and you just have to find out where he's coming from and then run perpendicular to it not parallel if you try and run away, he's going to catch up to you. You need to run perpendicular to it, and he will miss you. After that, he's got two more things he's going to do. At some point, he's going to slam his swords in the ground again and create two big boulders on each side of his shoulders. So I have four boulders in total. And they're going to follow him around for a while. And then once you get him down to about 25% health, he's going to run away from you. He's going to throw both of the sets of rocks at you. And then he's going to leap in the air and slam down and send a gravitational wave. Then he's going to charge up his arms, rise up in the air, and do a spin attack that will fly at you. You have to dodge right as he comes down at you, or dodge left. And then he's going to fly back up in the air and spin back around and come back at you again. So these are the attacks that I hope you get to see, but I'm not sure if you actually will. I apologize if you don't because, like I said, I'm going to try and take him down as much as I can the first fight here by myself. So you can see what he's like. And then I'm going to show you guys how to fight him with the summons. So here is Radon. <clears throat> so if you fight him alone, I recommend you don't take your flask yet. Matter of fact, even if you fight him with summons, don't take your flask yet. First thing we're going to do is immediately hop on Torrent and start riding to the right. I'm just going to be facing right. And hopefully we're going at enough angle that it misses us. Keep going. So now he's going to pull out his spears. You're going to hear the spears landing behind us. Oh no, he did another gravity shot. It's weird. Okay, so once we get over this ridge right here, I'm going to ride up towards him. Go ahead and take your flask now. He's going to do one more gravity shot, and he's going to come at us with his swords. So the best thing you can do is roll in and attack it. Oh, just gonna drink that. Alright, this is his sort of, you know, first phase. Now he's got some gravity magic like that. So he pulls you in, just roll towards him. Oh. Go ahead and heal. So, yeah, he has really long reach. It's insane how long it's reach is. And then here are the balls. Try and roll into them. Okay, this one you want to run away from. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. 
It's a very brutal attack. Some more magic. Roll towards home. Oh, they hit good. Oh, almost dead. I got him down to phase two. Okay, he's gonna fly up in the air. Look over here. Hop on torrent. And look over this way. You'll see him fly out of the sky. There he is. Just run perpendicular to him. And he'll miss you. Now run back up. And start attacking. So there's the boulders. So, roll forward into that wave. Oh, man, that's good. So, remember, roll towards him. Oh, staggered him. I don't want to bleed him, so I'm just going to hit him to 25%. He's doing his special move. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now he's going to run away. And he's gonna, I'm so happy I get to show this to you guys. I can't believe this worked. So dodge it one, two, and then dodge the last second towards it. Nope, nope. I messed it up. Oh, that was close. Remember, just, yeah, roll towards that. Now let's see if he does his big jump in the air. Yep, here it is. So, roll now, and then roll again. Nope, did it the last second. And those are his moves, and that's for Dawn, you guys. I'm gonna let him take me down. Wow, I can't believe I got to showcase all those moves. I am so happy, so happy I got to showcase all those moves for you guys. I hope that helps you understand what Radon is, how to fight him. Oh, that one's so good. I'm so happy. I was so nervous about that. Sorry, just whew, hands are shaking. <laughs> oh, that one's so good. I could have taken him down, but... Whew. All right, let's go ahead and show you how to do this with summons. Let me get a glass of water real quick. Whew. All right, you guys. So, with the summons, you want to... Ooh, let me crack my rune arc. You want to just make sure that he's on them at all times. And we're going to be hitting him with rot. We're going to be hitting him with fire, we're going to be hitting him with poison, all that good stuff. So we're just going to try and get him poisoned and rotted as quick as we can with the rot breath, you know, make um, poison or rot arrows if you don't have enough faith to do the rot breath. So six poison pots would be good. Oh, we can frost him too, so let's get some frost pots going. So yeah, I will throw, I'll throw all three of these in combination. Yeah, I was scared I was going to bleed him there, too, because this has blood loss on it. I didn't want to bleed him out and not be able to show you guys how to do the summons. So, of course, we're going to buff up before we go in, because as soon as we go in, it's game on. He's going to start shooting arrows directly at you, so <clears throat> uh, don't bother doing this summon. We're going to have all sorts of summons helping us, so we don't need to summon in our help. Although, I do think you can if you want to, though, as a last-minute last emergency, so... Let's go ahead and get buffed up. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is rot him. Oh, I should have saved that, but it's alright. So that's the first thing we're going to do is try and get him rotted. And then we're just going to stay a distance from him while he fights the other summons, and we're going to shoot him with projectiles. Take down Radon, so let's get to it. So remember, they give you a free one. Oh no! Oh, I knocked the stuff over. That sucks. So yeah, make sure you don't knock the stuff over when. Oh no! Let it heal. Alright. There. Okay, so there's the greeting I was telling you about, so make sure you cancel that out. Ooh, sorry guys. Messy there. Let's go over to this one. Something. 
was Blythe. I went over to this one. Then we get about here. He's gonna start. Who's this? So I'm... Oh. oh, that was Patches. Oh no, I summoned Patches. I can't... Don't do that, guys. <laughs> so I'm just trying to get away from his spears. Alright, now he's running up to them. Let's go ahead and get him rotted. And poisoned. Get on torrent now, because he is gonna come down from the skies, and then we gotta go look for some other summons, because most of our summons are dead. Okay, here he comes. Come on up to these. Start hitting the summon button. Oh no! That's close. Oh no! He's angry at me. So those were the stars, finally, coming back. Who doggy, how'd you guys do? Is that a fun fight, or what? Absolute bonkers and madness. The first time I did that, I dropped to the floor. My uh, little girl was with me when I beat it for the first time after like three hours. Finally beat it. I just dropped to the floor and just started panting. Ah, good. I was waiting for you. Oh, what a sick way to fight, eh? The glory of the clash is shared by Radan and you. And <laughs> did you see that afterwards? A falling star right before our eyes. I can't fathom how Radan was holding back something of that scale. He was a living legend if ever I saw one. And the path has now been cleared. To Nokla, where Rani's fate will be decided. Let's meet where the falling star bit the earth. We'll take up our souls once more for Mistress Rani. Let's meet where the food will go into my only purpose is to. Okay. 
Now let's talk to Alexander, and then we'll level up. Oh, excuse me. Ah, hello there. Oh, it was a battle marvelously fought. You are well and truly a champion, friend. I, on the other hand, am nothing but a croc. One hit was all it took to crack me, and for my insides to come spilling out. After that, I... I hid like a coward, and as such, I can hardly stand to face one such as you. Oh. But don't you think I've given up just yet? As luck would have it, there's a veritable mountain of warriors' bodies right here. If I can just squeeze this bunch down inside me, I'll be a mighty warrior again in no time. And you know, the bodies found here are exceedingly fine. Who could expect any less from the very warriors who fought in the Shattering? The greatest of all wars. Hm. Just you wait and see, friend. I'll grow even stronger. Just you wait when next we meet. <laughs> So after he gives out that little weird laugh, that's the last of his dialogue. So we are not done on Radon's field, though. A bit of a ride to take. And you see up there in the corner, that's the minor Ur tree. And you can see there's a branch sticking out. There's actually a platform that we can platform down to with what is quite possibly the strongest enemy in the entire game. It's a joke. They put a golem there that has magic attacks and so much defense and so much health that it's absolutely pointless to fight him. I saw one video of a guy that fought him and I think it took him seriously like 30-40 minutes to finally stagger him and take him down. So it's just like a joke. He's not supposed to be beaten, he doesn't drop anything special, it's just there to kill you as soon as you drop down. But there is an Ash of War there that we'll get. Or a Sorcery, one of the two. But we need to come all the way over here because I told you there was a Catacomb on Radon's field and we are not touching it. This is like one of the last things we're going to do in the game is come back to this catacombs. It does have a legendary Ash of War in here, but man, this place is an absolute nightmare. I think every single enemy in here is a knight or higher. So it's like yeah, one of the most difficult dungeons in the entire game. So we'll do a few uh, things for the storyline, and then we'll wrap up in a different area. So we'll do a few things first. Hmm, what's next? I think it's Faith. Yeah. So I'm a little bit halfway to a level up, so in between episodes I will go out and clear out the field. Vulcan Militiamen do another level up, and I recommend you do too, as always. Alright, so that is done. Oh, that's for the item on top of this. We'll dot next to it. We are done with our dawn. Whew, man, that went way better than I thought it was going to. I was really worried about how that was going to turn out. Okay, before we do anything else, come over here next to Jarberg. We gotta help a friend, I think. Can you hear me? Help me! I'm stuck! Hello? <laughs> Once again, he said, Hello? well, next you see me. Anyone? Just wait. <laughs> next we see him. <laughs> poor, poor Alexander. Ah, hello. How nice it is to see a friendly face. As you can surmise, I've got myself stuck in another hole. Would you mind helping me out again? My thanks in advance. I know you're the woman for the job. You know what to do, hmm? 
Give me a good smack from behind with something nice and big. No, no, don't worry about my wound sustained at the festival. I'm stuck back together good and proper. <laughs> Just give it your all. And so what I think is supposed to happen is you're supposed to try and hit him and it's not going to work. Please. Wait. Yeah. I have a terrible feeling about this. Would you stop hitting me for a minute? Now, I can feel my lower half is stuck on something. I don't think you can get me out just by hitting me this time. Hmm. Let's think. Perhaps there's a way to slide me out a little more smoothly. Now, what if I could somehow be made slippery or some such? All right, we can do that. Throw an oil pot at him. Now he's slippery. There he goes. Boop. My thanks to you and your razor sharp wits. Oh. As a token of my thanks, I'd like you to have this. Oh, dearie me, I'm oilier than a toad. <laughs> yeah, there were countless oil jars back where I'm from, actually. And now I know what it's like to be one of them. <laughs> yes, indeed. I too have a home. Though it is one to which I have vowed not to return. So, I thought I might look out from atop the cliff. But as I drew closer and closer, pow, wouldn't you know it, I was perfectly stuck in that blasted hole. I can feel the warriors inside admonishing me for my mawkishness. To walk the path of champions, one cannot cleave to the past. I'm headed to the fiery mount in the north. I can strengthen myself there, Without fear of cracking this vessel, I will forge myself anew in its flames. I'm headed to the... I can strengthen, I will for... Now we can go down and start the quest in Turberg and talk to the jar. And we'll collect all the plants while we're at it. This is one of the spots in the farming... farming route, which I'll talk about before we end this episode. I was going to go down into Nokron City, but I think I'll save it for next episode. I'll talk about the farming routes, close this one out. But this is one of them, just doing this right here. Coming to Jarbird, collecting all these plants. It's where you get a lot of your poison, poison pot materials. And there's a crystal bud here and a herba, so good place to come and collect plants. We'll talk to the tiny jar now. Hello, Cos. What are you doing here? I didn't think anyone knew about this place. Except us jars. Ah. Are you going to be the new potentate? Gosh. Truly. That's wonderful news. It's not easy being potentate, though. I know. Show me your hands. It's just a little test, cuz. To see if you've got the right stuff. Sorry, I bumped the microphone. Hmm. Your skin isn't so smooth, is it? You need slick, slidey hands to be potentate, you know? I'm sorry, cuz. But I don't think you've got what it takes. What a shame. Don't look so glum, cuz. We can still chat. Potentate or not, come back and visit me. When you can. I think that's the rest of the dialogue, but always sit down at the place and just double check. reason that I waited to talk to this guy is if you talk to him 
I've had it glitch out Alexander's quest and he didn't show up in that hole and instead went straight to Mount Gelmir, so that's why I waited to talk to the pot. Oh, hello again, cuz. I'm happy you came back. I have good tidings for you, cuz. Have you noticed the rare flowers growing in this village? I asked the villagers if you could pick some of them, and they said you'd be very welcome. Go on, cuz. You really should pick some of our flowers. Who knows? They might be of some use. He's right about that. Go on. Who knows? And then we'll sit down at the grid. That was weird. On the way to Bob Torrent for some reason. And then we'll sit down at the grace one more time just to make sure it's the rest of his dialogue. But first, we'll do as he says and collect all these plants. Like I'm full up on real fruit, which is always good. Doesn't matter what it is, if you're full on it, it's good. Luckily, there's basically infinite inventory space, except for you know being maxed out on an item. But aside from that, you can't uh, can't have too much in your inventory, which is always nice. Inventory management is such a pain in games. The reason I hate it is because I'm probably not good at it. But let me grab that herb real quick. Say, cuz, have you met Uncle Alexander? He used to live here with us, but then he left to be a champion. I asked to go with him, but he said, the path of champions must be trod alone. <laughs> so heroic, right? I miss him, though. If you see him, you should ask him to teach you how to fight, cuz. He's big and Tough and strong. Uncle Alexander said he won't be back again. My home is of the past, and the past, as they say, is a different country. I suppose that's part of being a warrior, isn't it? So, please don't tell anyone, cuz. But I'm actually a warrior jar as well. One day, I'll be just like Uncle Alexander. Then I'll have to leave the village to become a champion. Uncle Alexander won't come back. My home is off the... I suppose that... That should be it. Just grabbing that poison blue. Do you know what a poacher is, cuz? They hunt us, smash us, and then take us away. This village is kept secret, so I think we're safe here. But you should be careful if you ever meet one of them, cuz. I hope Uncle Alexander beats them all up first. Those awful poachers. Man, is this the end of your dialogue, dude? You got more. Start one more time. Oop. It should end. There's another character's quest that we have to progress to end the rest of his his quest. Okay, yeah, that's right. He he's gonna be down, and then we're gonna sit down. And he's gonna be back up. Stop! No! Please! No, don't break us. <laughs> Pretty sad. Please. Almost makes me want to wake him up. All right, buddy. We better be done with your dialogue. Awful poke. Okay. All right. Now we're done. It's like good board, man. So, let's go turn on Radon's um, great room. 
And then we'll go turn in some remembrance to the round table. It's either with Don or his brother, one of the two. Um, their great rune does what the Erd Tree favor talisman does. It raises your HP, your stamina, and your equip load. So I think it does the same thing, but I can't recall. But either way, the great rune that we have on is honestly the great rune we're going to use for the entire game. It's the best one. The other ones, they raise your health and stuff, and they buff you up, but not as good as raising all of your attributes by five levels. That is just too much. Too awesome. So remember, Renala's Great Rune isn't one that you can wear. It's the Rebirth. So that's why we haven't been to the tower yet. The tower for Renala is different. It doesn't have a great room on top of it. We'll get to that a little bit later. Different episode. Alright, so let's go to the round table hole. <sighs> so, now we can buy Radon's armor. Which we'll go ahead and hold off on, but we do have to buy a piece of armor from the gods to progress box quest. But we'll do that a little bit later. And so now you can get Radon's sword, which is a dual wielding sword. It comes with two. So when you put it in your hand, if you do the two handed motion like you're doing when you're two handing your left handed weapon, then you will pull out the other sword and then you can dual wield it. Now remember, when you dual wield two weapons, it's the other button, like your other attack button, that does the dual wielding motions. But when you're two handing a single weapon, it's just the regular attack. That's how you dual wield attack. So if you start trying to use the regular dual wield attack when you're holding Radon's weapons or any other weapons like the claws that have two um, weapons that come with one, then yeah, you just gotta press the regular attack button. And Radon's great sword, or Radon's bow is awesome too has a really awesome Ash War that does really good damage. Awesome, awesome damage. Matter of fact, I might be getting that. Yeah. I think I'm going to get his bow, because we're going to use that on some dragons later. So, I'm going to get Radon's bow. You guys can get this. I'm not going to get up to enough um, magic intelligence to use either of these. I think both of them need 60 and 70. So I'll get up enough to use this, but I'm not going to use it because I'm not going to be using full moon sorceries. So I'm going to go ahead and crack this open, which is, I think, 20,000 runes. Now go full. And so if you're not going to go that high up in intelligence, I recommend you do the same. But of course, if you're high in intelligence, then, the um, the two you that maybe. staff, Ronnie's staff, is one of the best ones in the game. Mm hmm. Yeah, so he hasn't got anything more to say. So now that we are done with that, see this red mark right here. That's where the Starfall Crater landed, so that's where we're going to go. Before we do, we're going to go talk to E.G. Now you don't have to do this next part of the quest. The quest will continue on as if you didn't do this part but it just adds a little bit of lore, so that's why we're doing it. Ah, you finally come. Blythe told me everything. You've defeated General Radan, unlocking the stars. The General was blighted by Scarlet Rot and driven to madness. But not long ago, he was hailed as the mightiest demigod of them all. There is no parallel to your achievement nor to Lady Rani's acute judgment of character. Thanks to you, Lady Rani's fate once again stirs, and the path to Nokron has opened. Descend underground where the fallen star struck Limgrave, and make it yours. 
the precious treasure of Nokron. Oop. Meant to talk to him. Something or oh, Blythe wanted me to tell you not to bother waiting for him and head straight to Nokron. Blythe has been given an important task. Apparently a matter of great urgency. And so oh. you need not await, Blythe. Descend underground alone, with a fallen star struck limgrave, and make it yours so that late. So Interesting tidbit most people don't know about. Now that we talked to Bly, or um, EG about Bly, if we go down to Ag Hill Lake South and we head over to the Everjail that we fought Darwell, the Bloodhound Knight, at with Bly, this happens. My thanks, friend. I'm going to see Mistress Rani now. I don't know what came over old E.G., but even if the odds are slim, I need to check that Mistress is safe. Now, Rani can finally set in motion the fight against her fate she's dreamt of for so long. I'm going to see Mistress... I don't know what... But even if the... I'm not going to spoil too much, but unfortunately... This is the last time we see Blythe. We love you, Blythe. We love you. Okay, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and save the routes for farming later. I'm just gonna tell you about them. I put a diamond over every route that is, you know, has materials that we need to farm to make this game, you know, more feasible. So, all the butterflies, the poison flowers, the melted mushrooms, the holy flowers, all that stuff, all the roas and the herba fruit, or all the herbas and all the roa fruit, um, we need to collect all that stuff, and you need to have a good stockpile of it, and thin bones and everything like that, so, I start here, and I go out and I clear the field, it's about 20, 23, 24,000 runes now that we have the gold scarab talisman. So put that on, clear the field, takes about five minutes, then start at Lena's Rise, grab the Glenstone Fireflies, grab the Fergal Bloom, the Lightning Flowers, and then come down over here. I want to show you this one at least before we head down into Nokrond and end the episode. So instead of doing the beach one, Go to High Road Cave and then just come out of the cave and there's five octopuses that are just as weak as the one on the as the ones on the beach. So this one is much, much quicker. And you just knock out these five right in a row. Ooh. Sorry. Just simmer down, buddy. Huh? See, super weak. So I come out here. And there's a turtle out here too, so every time you do it you can get a turtle neck for some pickle turtle necks, so. Very good spot to farm for these, and once again, the ovaries are something that we're going to need for a perfume bottle. We're gonna, it's going to raise our attack and our defense. So very, very awesome. And we need as many of these as we can get. So there's two more. Here. 
here and then one at the end. So yeah, you get a lot more um, ovaries this way by just going up this river. right here the war master shack running in through this field clearing out all the foliage in there you get a lot of herbas and uh, smoldering butterflies a lot of smoldering butterflies right here and then of course going into jarber to get all the flowers and plants this one is very important come to the academy crystal cave every time you play and just sit down five times and grab these two items right here this budding cave moss and this budding cave moss and then come sit back down and do it again. And do that five times and you have 10 budding cave mosses. And you want as many of these as possible. We're gonna be using them a ton later in the game. So start stocking up on these and see how many I have. Oh, I'm in item, it's like my item. 49 so far, so let's go ahead and make a new 50. So you just do that 10 times and you have 20. So it adds up quick, but do this five times and then just teleport out, go to the four belfries, grab some herbas, do that four or five times. And then down here, we grab the mushrooms. So that's why I put that. We're actually gonna get, now that we've beaten Radon, we're gonna get a new place to farm coming up in the next episode. But I just go through and I start here and I farm that. And then farm that, come over here and farm that, do one of these, Jarberg, farm for some smoldering butterflies, and then do this five times, do this five times, it takes about 10 minutes, and I collect a bunch of supplies for it, and now I'm ready for the game. And so I recommend you do the same, just like every time you start the game up, sit down, farm for those materials real quick, and then jump into progressing in the game, and I promise it will make all the difference in the world. I promise, I promise, I promise. So let's go ahead and end the episode by jumping down into that crater. And that's where we'll pick up in the next one. I'm just so relieved that the Redon fight went well. I was very, very worried about that. So yeah, big hole, bunch of land hanging out now. Normally there would have been a message from Blythe right here. Like literally a big message, right? On this rock, I think. And it would have said that he was held up right now and can't join us. But since we let him out of the Everjail, it's not there. So come on down over this way. I don't know why we can summon here. It's absolutely pointless. It's kind of weird. It disappears. Could run down here. Down over here, we're gonna lose Torrent. That's okay. Uh, oh, whoa! Uh, uh, oh my gosh! Okay, guys, don't jump into that blue thing. Guess you can die. Wow! That scared me. <laughs> Alright, guys, don't jump over blue doors that Torrent can't go behind, because that just happened. I've never seen that before. Uh, what a race to be ruin our bummer. Whew. Man, that scared me because I just didn't even know that was a possibility. So, falling in this game is not based on, like, height doing damage to you. Falling is based on a timer. And so, when you jump a certain distance, you have a certain amount of time to land. And if you don't, or if the game doesn't register that you've done a double jump on Torrent, then... As soon as you leave the ground, a timer starts, and if too much time goes by, you will die, regardless of how much health you have or anything like that. And so, right there, I really, I don't think I should have died. That was some weird glitch where it was trying to get me off torrent because, or either I double jumped from right here. I think I might have not landed, 
and then did a double jump because riding into this you get off and I think somehow it didn't register that I had landed on the ground yet and so the time just went too long and it killed me so yeah be careful jumping in on that that can take you down as you just saw that was weird sorry about that so let's go ahead and just we're just gonna go on down and grab the first grace and then we're gonna end the episode so shouldn't be any enemies in here just a bunch of loots Actually, I think there's a few enemies, but nothing to, to worry about. Let's come on down over here. I don't think there's anything in there. Yep. So yeah, this whole path was created by the stars that just crashed into the earth after we took out Radon. So, pretty crazy stuff. Okay, okay, I know them. So yeah, we do got a few enemies. I thought we were somewhere somewhere different, but that's okay. Okay, I know where I thought we were. So this part, um this part sucks. I might die here. It's not fun doing this, but uh go ahead and jump on down to a light load. We're gonna run about to where that sign is, and then we're gonna leap very uncomfortably over to that ledge. I hate doing that. So go ahead and get down to a light load, otherwise you will not make that jump. And then very carefully hop up on here and make this jump. Ugh. Make sure you're light load, and that gets you one of the coolest torches in the game. These are super important. Can't even cannot stress enough how important these are. Silver tier husk. We need to pick up as many of those as we possibly can. We'll be farming for a lot of those. Those are going to be super helpful moving forward. What was I wearing with this? I think I was wearing the Exile Greaves. Yes. Okay. Alright, these enemies are weird. They are little bubbles that pop up and shoot out spikes at you. Not very friendly. Let's go ahead and roll down to this group. Roll down onto this guy. Get rid of him. See? Shot a big one right past me. So they like to shoot from a distance. They're pretty susceptible to arrows and they're pretty weak, you know, so just a few hits takes them down. But they're pretty annoying. Though. See, instinct just told me that he was gearing up to hit, and that's why I rolled. So it's like, you want to get in the habit of just, like, rolling every once in a while. You know, even if you, I don't know, just have a lot of confidence and don't feel like you're going to get hit, still roll. Uh, let's go down this way. This looks like there's more items this way. But be careful and drop off at the lowest point. I don't want to mess around with heights, as you can just see. There's nothing in that. We don't go in there the entire game. No way to get to it. Bugs me. It's the only place in the game that we see that we cannot go to. It bugs me for some reason. Oh, well, there's a few other places, but not as prominent as that. Should come back here and grab this. Very importante. As they say in Spanish. Thing. All right, now we got some guys. This is where I thought we were coming down to, so drop down under here. These guys are kind of like the little guards with the knives that attack you really fast. They're not very strong, but they're really aggressive. They they love to fight, 
So as soon as they see you, they're gonna. Yay! So just um, yeah, be ready to take care of them. Because they're pretty annoying, see? So, like I said, they're. They're pretty ornery. You don't wanna kind of ignore them, because they'll, they'll keep coming. They'll do some damage after they win, so. Take them out as quick as you can. But like I said, they're pretty easy. Alright. Make sure I got all the silver tear husks. Nope. There's one over here. And then here is Nakron City. I'll go ahead and show it to you guys. We are in Nakron. I'm gonna clear this out starting next episode, so. Congratulations, you guys. We made it past for Dawn, our third shard bearer. Whew, man, what an episode. So, sorry this went a little long. Wanted to get to a good spot where we can stop. So, here's where we are on the map. And I'll go ahead and put a little diamond here because this right here is a farming spot where we're going to get a lot of supplies. So, um, next time we will finish this underground chunk all the way up to a boss right here that we'll wait to come back for. But we'll finish this underground chunk. And then after we do that, we will go up the ravine veiled village and head into the next landmass and the next part of the game so congratulations you guys on defeating radon uh, let me know how you guys did in the comments I'm curious if you guys got any questions let me know in the comments and if you got any constructive criticism on how i can make this series better please let me know in the comments as well but until next time be kind to yourselves be kind to each other i love you guys i'll see you later